When we leave Mitzrayim, the Egyptian systems of this world, there is one thing we do not want to take with us. Hi, this is Barry Phillips, a 10-minute tour, day number five, the final day of a special week of readings pertaining to Pesach. Before we go into Shemot or Exodus chapter 12 and look at verse 39, let me just say to you that I pray that the Father has given to you a meaningful Pesach experience, that the days of unleavened bread will be especially meaningful for you. I know that many of us have uh, chosen one day or the other that may be different than some. However, your calendar has aligned you. I'm thankful that you have observed Passover or Pesach. So may Yah's favor be upon you as you have or, or will be doing so. Now, in chapter 12, verse 39, we read, And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they had brought out of Mitzrayim, for it was not leavened since they were driven out of Mitzrayim, had not been able to delay, nor had they prepared food for themselves. We'll pause there for a moment. When we come out, of Mitzrayim, we don't bring leavened bread with us. Leaven. Leaven is a symbol of sinful hearts, minds, and behavior, attitudes. Leaven in and of itself, just the product of leaven, honestly, and, and obviously there's no sin regarding it. It is used to inflate bread, to make bread more flavorful. Uh, it has its purposes. But during this week, we abstain from anything that has leaven in it. As leaven is a type of sin, and um, it is a shadow of sin, therefore we are looking in our lives and we're examining the things that puff us up. What is it that inflates us? Our greatest adversary is uh, not an imaginative figure in a red suit with horns and a pitchfork. It is not the actuality of anything demonic or serpentine. It's ourselves. There are lurks behind the curtains and in the shadows of our very own beings a version of ourselves that if we would let it out fully and completely, it would be very destructive. It would be hurtful to ourselves and to those that are around us. It would act in the, the most grotesque ways of selfishness and self-centeredness. We would be arrogant. We would be prideful. We would be loathing. We would be greedy. We would be manipulative. And the list could go on and on and on. These are the characteristics of that self. More often than not, we are trying to hide it, preventing it from being seen or getting out. What we're instructed to do, however, is to put the old man to death. The unfortunate thing is, as much as we believe in the resurrection of Yeshua the Messiah, which we will be celebrating this Shabbat, as much as we believe in the power of that resurrection, the old man seems to be the most resurrected thing on the face of the earth. We put it to death today. We bury it deeply in the backyard of our soul we pile rocks upon it, we pour concrete over it, and the very next moment it has the opportunity, it will be standing up on the ground, seeking to take authority and rise up overneath uh, or over top of us. The old man must be put to death on a consistent and constant basis. Something that's been going over in my mind over the last week or so and something I've been praying through, is the difference between Yaakov and Esau, twin brothers, same mother, same father, same home environment, same living conditions, the opportunity to the very same life experiences, 
yet the contrast between these two brothers could not be greater. Esau demonstrated a heart that was very much a narcissist and completely bent on himself. He lived for his own means, yet he believed, evidently, that when things really came to crunch time, when it really mattered to be righteous, he would simply repent, say the words, shed some tears, be forgiven, and stand in, in the proper place to receive all that was due him simply because he thought it's due me. This attitude of I can get by with whatever I want to get by with and repent when it matters. It's a very dangerous mindset, and it's very easy to adopt. Uh, I've often referred to the sin, repent, sin, repent cycle. And it seems to be something that has become ingrained in us for generations we get on fire, we become very enthused, we become very zealous, we pray a lot, we read the scriptures a lot, and at some point we began to wane and that enthusiasm, that fervor, we fall back into old habits, we don't pray as often, we study less, we, we still do the right things as far as the mechanics go, as far as others can see. But in our heart and mind, we know I'm being compromised. I'm making allowances for ideas or mindsets, attitudes, thoughts. And the focus is just not sharp. We convince ourselves, oh, I'm all right. It'll be all right. I'll just pray more, maybe tomorrow. And then the cycle of sliding downhill begins. Esau lurks in the shadows, inside all of us, potentially. And my thoughts have been, Father, I want to recognize him. I want wanted posters out on him all over the interior of my spirit being. I want to hunt him down. I do not want to give him an inch. I don't want that character. I don't want that heart. For in Malachi 1, you said, Yaakov, I have loved. Esau, I have hated. I do not want to be that way. Consider Yeshua in Luke chapter 4. He's in the wilderness. He is being tempted. And I've come to realize that even Yeshua had the propensity, the opportunity, he had the ability to delve into an Esau mindset, yet he knew that his mission required a greater effort than that. I, I cannot imagine how fiercely he must have had to overcome and war against any indication, any inclination whatsoever to depart from the perfect will of the Father. And while we might think, well, that would have been an exhausting experience to have to constantly be on such a, a fervent guard. But Yeshua, I believe, I believe, found such joy and, and fulfillment in seeking the Father's face, being alone with Him, and fulfilling His will. That 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 overwhelmed him, that encouraged him, that, that strengthened him to a place that the Esau tendencies were, were weaker and weaker, perhaps. Again, that's an imaginative take from my part. But I do know this, that walking where you need to walk, praying as you ought to pray, being filled with the word as we should, Seeking Him, being filled with His Spirit as we should, certainly goes a long way of keeping any leaven out of our lives and preventing us from being puffed up and arrogant. May Yah keep Esau from us. Shabbat Shalom to you and to all who are with you. I sincerely mean that. May the light, the glory, and the majesty of our King fill you 
and all that you are with and wherever dwelling you might be. Until next week, Shabbat Shalom.